Hi, we're Autumn and Chloe. We live full-time in this vintage Class C RV that we recently renovated. Before that, we lived in a converted car camper to travel across the West for a year and a half. In this video, I share about getting seriously, dangerously ill in the RV. Be sure to subscribe. Well, I was in the emergency department for about 11 hours getting fluids. I got so sick, you guys. Oh. Last weekend was a nice cozy weekend in the rig. This weekend was a nice trip to the hospital in an ambulance. And uh, finally being able to speak to a question I have gotten ever since I moved into my car, which is, what if you get really sick? on the road how do you go to the bathroom and what do you do i had somebody ask like if you eat really bad taco bell <laughs> which is funny and gross um oh my god you guys this was a rough one seems to be a case of food poisoning i had never been so sick with such a sudden onset and serious symptoms arising so quickly here i am stocking up on electrolyte water after i was discharged i'm feeling much better. The onset of all of this is about 24 hours ago <laughs> where I was talking about thinking that maybe I was feeling off as a result of having eaten ice cream and maybe my body just not reacting to the sugar. Getting older is wonderful. Like yay that it's happening and I am losing the ability to eat certain things that I used to be able to eat without consequence that is too much. My body just doesn't tolerate processed foods and I typically eat healthy but I don't have like a crazy clean diet. I like fast and easy because I don't love to cook. Little did I know that I had food poisoning and it was about to get real bad. <laughs> We are gonna take a very slow day, pretty much do a little bit of video editing, and uh, I need to get some power steering fluid. I have a power steering leak from the gearbox. It's one of the mechanical issues I need to have fixed. And then we're gonna go somewhere else today. We're gonna leave the yard that we've been in for almost like two and a half months to health. <laughs> I imagine that most people out there have had food poisoning at one point in their life. So I've joined the club. I feel ya. <laughs> I'm curious, has anybody else had to go to a hospital for it? I could be like in this really bad mood because of the financial burden this will cause. But you know what? I'm not. I, I might be later. <laughs> but I'm just so grateful that support and help was available so quickly, immediately when I needed it. It gave me this whole new appreciation for like our 911 system. And again, like the type of people who are willing to show up and help in those kinds of situations, like I can't thank you enough. Cheers to EMTs and nurses and doctors and emergency room techs that I suppose this is one of the few times that I'm like man I really wish I had a shower in my rig because after all of that just being in the hospital and you know just feeling a little icky it'd be nice to have a shower in my place I am not in the mood to go to the gym I will be cautious with everything now in a way that I have not been. I do not plan to eat out. Ice cream is a thing of the past. There's a thing about getting really sick that has me reflecting on life. Right now, I am absolutely living the life that I want to be living. Almost. Almost. So that's what was really cool with this reflection. It wasn't like, oh, I need to make these huge extravagant changes. But there are some changes where it's like, wait a second, where was I letting fear or dread or lacking of bravery 
stop me from doing certain things I fundamentally want to do. And I have some clarity about that. There are still things that intimidate me about this rig that I dread doing and avoid doing in such a way that it is leading me to not live the life that I fundamentally want to live. This is a large rig. It's 27 feet long, eight feet wide, 216 square feet. And that's amazing. And it's been hard for me to move this around with the ease that I want. And that's because every time I move it, I have to like set things up so they won't fly across the whole rig as I drive. And it's just because it's still somewhat intimidating to me to drive something this big. What this sickness really brought about for me was I want to be more mobile than I am. And I absolutely need to become just more comfortable and not feel this sense of heaviness or dread when I need to move the rig and drive the rig. Editing side note, saying all of that does not mean that I want to get rid of Old Clunky. On the contrary, I actually want to get really familiar and comfortable with Old Clunky. I don't want to let something that's big and large and kind of intimidating to stop me. Rather, I want to master it. There are some people who are team clunk and team sell clunk, go get a van. <laughs> <laughs> and I will tell you this, I probably will sell Old Clunky in like two years, maybe, probably. But for two years, I'm staying in Arizona because I have some professional goals that require I stay in the state of Arizona. <laughs> Once I no longer have to stay in Arizona, I will be traveling far and wide. For now, I want the comfort of clunk. All right, back to about a week ago. <laughs> project for the day. I got to do some touch-up paint. Then I decided that I prefer this flower to be on a screw. I previously had it on Velcro, but it wasn't staying as good. And it's just much easier to lift off with the screw. That screw was black. It doesn't match the white. So I'm going to spray paint it. Here's the finished product of a spray painted screw. Now let's see if my uh, engine turns on. Crossing my fingers. It's already a good sign. <laughs> Woo! Yes. All right, so getting the uh, outside all set up for moving. Once I've been set up for a little while, I mean, it's the big task. This is one of the reasons that I was saying I sort of have this dread about moving, but I need to get used to that. So first I need to move my propane tanks to be on the inside. This winter, one of my greatest finds was a hose that allows for external propane tanks. This way, I didn't have to drive the RV in the snow and ice to fill the tank that's attached to the rig. For the outside, I still need to take the motorhome off the levels, but I'm not gonna do that until I get the inside all ready to go. Otherwise, I'm really off balance. Getting the inside ready to go really primarily consists of taking anything that's going to fall off the wall, anything that's on a shelf, like securing it. I'm not quite sure why I dreaded this task as I had before. As I went through this task mindfully to start imprinting the habits of what I needed to do on move day, I realized that this task really isn't that big of a deal. In my mind, I had turned this task into far more of a dreadful task than it actually is. On we go to get propane to set up at our new location. We're actually house sitting. So we're parking in front of the house to take care of the house. It'll be a nice change of pace. As I'm talking, I'm like, my voice is so messed up. Listen to this. Once I made a decision that I was gonna feel comfortable with clunk, 
it's like it opened a door in my own consciousness and it's really not that big of a deal it takes 30 minutes or so to pack up and secure things after living in the car for a year and a half that was so easy to just pull in somewhere slither and sneak into the back and go to sleep I wasn't used to the extra chores involved in the RV, but they're really not that big of a deal. I'm gonna show you something that Chloe, for some reason, likes when I do. It's Friday again. I really like Friday that nice feeling days off. Chloe really wants to go outside. Taking her for like these mini walks today and we're no longer in the yard where she can just run around on her own. I miss those days. When I saw this sadness in her face, despite my fatigue, we went out for a walk. It actually felt nice. Like, I'm glad we did it. Dogs keep you healthy. So, even when I am tired and I don't feel like doing stuff, it's important to me to get things ready for a, a morning where all I have to do is turn on the coffee pot. I think in the whole time, that I've been a nomad. So again, going on close to two years, almost at my two year nomadversary. I think maybe less than three times in two years did I not have my coffee or tea prepped the night before. This chica likes to wake up slowly and enjoy a lovely, wonderful cup of joe or good old Earl Grey English breakfast tea. excited for the morning. Back to the food poisoning. When I was in the hospital, I had mixed feelings. I was so grateful for the care and the physical relief that the fluids and medication provided. However, I had a new pit in my stomach when I considered the financial costs. Also, I'm a tough gal with grit and perseverance. Once I was coherent, I asked the ER doc, what could I have done to stick this out at home? What could I have done to avoid coming to the hospital? The ER doc said, nothing. Had you not come, you could have died. She was referring to the degree to which I was dehydrated and the effect this had on my heart rhythms. I had mixed feelings about her feedback. On one hand, I felt tremendously grateful that I called 911. And on the other hand, I was like, whoa, this was far more serious than even I realized. That walk with Chloe was so invigorating but even in my tired recovering state, I got like a second wind. We're gonna go lay down now and I'm looking forward to it. You ready to lay down, honey? Go ahead, go ahead, honey. Let's go. Go on up. Up up, honey. Good girl. Go on over. Hi, honey. Is that comfortable? How's that? Is that good? You ready to go to bed? <laughs> What's that look, honey? Six days post food poisoning, Chloe and I were out and about going for a walk with our friend Brian and his dog Rebel. Hey Brian, what kind of band do you want? Sprinter. Getting <laughs> ready to host for the first time in Old Plunk and washing all my blankets on this house set. And there are many. I currently am using eight blankets because it is freezing in the winter. And I'm gonna wash them all and bring in a whole bunch more blankets because now <laughs> the second person will need a second set of blankets in this freezing cold RV experience. A tiny space can become messy so quickly. 
but it cleans up quick too. And I did have something like 15 blankets and 20 pillows, not even kidding, scattered throughout my rig as I got my guest bed ready for my upcoming guest. Does anyone else find chores to be soothing? I love turning a mess into order and beauty. I love a fresh scent and the uplifted energy that is felt when a home is tended to. When I lived out of my car camper, I cleaned it every day. I'll bring feng shui to anything, to the 30 square feet of a converted car camper and to the 216 square feet of a vintage RV. adequately rested this last week. I was discharged from the hospital on Sunday. I did sleep for 15 hours after that. And then on Monday, I moved the rig and set things up. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I worked 12 hour days. Friday, I worked a 10 hour day. Saturday, I really missed people. So I socialized. Today, I went on a hike with a friend and have been doing all of this to my RV to get ready for another friend who is coming from Europe to visit. And I would like this person to have very nice, clean bedding, especially after having had food poisoning. <laughs> like, I just didn't want to risk the place smelling like somebody who had food poisoning this past week. Making the loft bed isn't so easy. When I purchased the rig, I initially wished I had purchased something with only a loft bed. Now, I am so glad I have my bedroom in the back of this rig. In a very conscious effort to slow down and rejuvenate my energy after just being exhausted, I've decided not to go to Tiny Fest, which is very sad. I love Tiny Fest. Editing side note, Tiny Fest is an incredible, typically annual festival in which a whole bunch of van and schoolie and vehicle dwellers, as well as tiny home manufacturers, let you walk through a whole bunch of tiny rigs. I featured Little Red in the festival a few times and had thought I was gonna do so again this year. Sadly, I'll be missing it. It's in San Diego, it's next weekend, and I don't have it in me to go into a large city. Large cities exhaust me. Chloe gets too nervous when I'm up here. It's all right, honey. I don't know why. Anybody know why my dog would get nervous when I'm up here? She like seems seriously in distress. So what I was saying is, despite my love for Tiny Fest, uh, I'm too tired. So when my friend from Europe is here, who happens to be a nomad, which is really cool, we're sort of sharing the nomad experience in the US, and then who knows, maybe I'll even go to Europe and see what the nomad experience is like there. Being out in nature away from large cities is absolutely what I need right now. But maybe I can attend other festivals over time. Maybe some of the ones that are like out in the desert, because honestly, if I never had to step foot in a concrete jungle again, I would be happy. After all that hard work, I've got five blankets on my bed. And it's nice and clean. That candle is holding this door shut. I'm on this mild slant like this. I'm like exaggerating it, but it's this mild slant. And this door and that door keep popping open. But this is now a very nice blanketed bed. Hopefully it'll be warm enough. We'll see. It is finally time to speak to a question that is pretty much one of my most frequently asked questions since I have been a nomad, which is, what do you do if you get extremely sick while living on the road? I'm sitting on my camp toilet right now trying to tell you, <laughs> trying to tell you how to basically vomit and have diarrhea while you live in your rig, especially if you don't have running water. So. I actually think it would have been utterly disgusting had I had the RV toilet. I think RV toilets are gross. I think they're disgusting. People are like, you can't smell it. I can still smell the black tank in this thing and I like sealed it off and there is no toilet going to it and it's been flushed out. So had I had to vomit into a toilet where I would have got a whiff of the black tank, like gross. 
I much prefer this system that I have. Being in the RV, in the dry cabin style RV, I have these biodegradable bags, which are linked in the description below. These are what I use for my daily number two. They're heavy duty, no pun intended. They work great. They're biodegradable. You get like a hundred bags for like 20 bucks. Well, these also came in wonderful for vomiting. So this is a shoe box that I use as storage. When I needed to vomit, I lined the shoe box with this bag as such right here. And I vomited as needed. And then I also found it more comfortable actually to vomit old fashioned style over the camp toilet. This is what you do essentially every day for your business. You line this thoroughly. If you're very sick, you can kneel, you can vomit. I found this more comfortable until the food poisoning was bad enough. Yeah, this is way TMI, but you know what? I'm keeping it real. When you have food poisoning to the degree that I had, having just one vomiting receptacle is not enough because your body is trying to dispel that bacteria out of every orifice possible. Here you go. Yep, vomit, bathroom. <laughs> And then, because you're really sick, you just toss these bags outside your rig until you can properly throw them away in a dumpster, which is really gross, but hey, it's biodegradable. Turns into compost. Nature recycles everything. <laughs> I will probably have more reflections as it actually sinks in how serious this particular illness was. I'm fine now. Fatigued, tired, fine. And it's a really weird thing when you have a doctor tell you that it, had you not come in, you could have died. The idea of the end is always, always a blessing. We can take it as scary, we can give away our power, or we can thank the fact that we remember our own mortality enough to say, am I living the life I want? As I shared earlier in the video, what is so cool is in so many ways I'm living the life I want, but in some ways I'm still not. So more changes to come. Yay for being just fine. I have a few things to do before my friend arrives tomorrow. I will catch you later. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Bye. Thanks for watching. To follow our adventures, as well as all kinds of information and how-tos about living in your RV or living and camping in your car, like, comment, turn on that notification bell, and subscribe.